Oh, welcome to our last session of the day before lightning talks. We have nearly made it through an entire day of a mini comp for games. Hooray! Thank you for joining us. It's been really exciting having you all. Um, up next, we have Rihanna. She is a front-end developer at Reactor, uh, Reinteractive. Reinteractive, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and she's, gonna, she's come all the way over from WootConf to come and give us this special <laughs> presentation. It was a long journey, and we're very, very lucky to have her. Uh, please welcome Rihanna. Hi. Hello. Um, so today I'm going to be, it's going to be following off my WootConf talk, so I think that's all online, so if you want to know more you can have a look at that. Uh, but the project I'm talking about today is Mouse and Maps. So this is the project where I took a role-playing game that I was playing and made it into a, a website application so I could keep better track of what my players were doing and yeah, and so I didn't forget in between sessions and everything. Okay, uh, so Mouse Guard is kind of it's kind of a fantasy setting. If you, if you're not familiar with it, it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty obscure role playing game. But I, I kind of like to think of it as Lord of the Rings, but instead of elves and dwarves and all that, you have mice, and <laughs> instead of big epic adventures and magic and stuff, you you go around. You go around the map, uh, you, you solve civil disputes basically, so you deliver mail. Um, if somebody's not happy in the town and there's a, there's a dispute over something, you can go in and you can negotiate and stuff like that. So it's a bit, it's a lot more interactive and it's a lot more storytelling and there's a lot more focus on the characters, their backstories, where they're from, where their relationships are. Uh, do they, is there, do their parents come from here, or do they come from over here? Um, did they, who did they do their internships with? Are their parents still alive? A, a, a lot of stuff that a lot of you know, superheroes and other fantasy settings just kind of gloss over. Um, everyone's dead, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, <laughs> so, but because this one is so involved, when I started playing it and when I started running it, I was just really, really in over my head. I had all these notes everywhere. I had lots of crosses, and I just you might have one or two weeks between things and it's just I couldn't remember what was going on so I thought I would write a program to remember it all for me and so this is it. Uh, so this is the first program that I ever kind of wrote under my own steam. Before this it was all tutorials, um, going to information things, going to conferences like this, learning lots of things and doing kind of step by step. So this is the first one I ever ever did. So this was about three years ago and before I started work as a developer. So if it's, if it's looking a little out, outdated, it's because it's it is. Um, <laughs> I'd really love to go in here and clean it up a bit, but I think it's st still got some sort, I think it's still got a bit of charm to it. So. so how it works is that we got, I wanted to have a map of the system. It's very map based. You're moving around the map. You're going to different towns. You're talking to people. Um, the map library I'm using is called leaflet.js. This is pretty much the only one I could find and it is also really, really nice. It's, I, I did this before I knew pretty much any JavaScript. I had just learned HTML and CSS, a tiny bit of JavaScript and I could still use this. That's how nicely written it was. It's how nice the documentation is. So I encourage anyone who is going to do uh, a mapping project to use this one. I just, it's also really nice because it lets you put in custom maps. If you're using something like Google Maps, or that was pretty much the only other one I found, you have to use their maps. You have to use the world maps. But in this one, you can make your own custom maps. You can put your own stuff in there, and you can manipulate it. And there is so much stuff you can do in the API. If you have a look in the docs, there is just so, so much stuff in there to just really, there are so, so, so many things that you can do with it. It's just, it, the list goes on and on. And it's, it's really, really nice to use. Highly recommend. So I'm going to go through a bit of that today. Um, so this is kind of how it works. You've got your map pointers on there. I then made a form. So this is using Ruby on Rails. I did this just after I did uh, uh, Rails install fest, which is done by Reinteractive, who have since hired me which is all very nice. <laughs> so it's kind of come full circle, which is nice. Um, but you can use it with anything, because Leaflet's a JavaScript library. It works with anything. So I use Ruby on Rails, because that's the, the hammer I had at the time. But you could use whatever you like. 
So I have my forms, I've got my database. I've got a couple of hidden ones there that I'll just unhide to show you. Oh, after I boot up my server. And the hidden ones have the... have the longitude and latitude in it. I didn't keep them on... I didn't keep them on here because I figured no one wants to see it and you don't want to have to go in and manually do it. And so what I, what I do have is I've got a lot of JavaScript in the background that hang, handles the log longitude and latitude, which I'll get to in a minute. But I'll just show what a fresh one looks like. So this is a fresh one. So I've got some zooming action going and I've got some click and drag so you can drag around. You can click on the markers you've already done and then it shows you the information that you've put in about that and then you can type in more information. And if you want to do a new one, you can right click on it and you can come down here and you can type in what information you like and you can save that. And then when you come back up, it shows up there. So that's the interface I wanted. I wanted something all on one page. Uh, if you're not familiar with Ruby's on Rails, by default, it comes with a majillion pages to do everything. It's got a show page, an edit page, an, an everything page. And yeah, I didn't really want, I wanted to kind of move away from that, have it all on one page so I can move around, I could do my forms, I can, then if you want to update that, you just click on it. Some stuff is here. And then you can just click update and then it updates. So it's all really nice. It's just on the one, on the one thing. So I'm just going to show you a couple of uh, problems I came, uh, I came across. Mostly it's to do with the size of the map. This is a very small map compared to a world map, obviously. With a world map, when you're scrolling from side to side, you're going to get more map and it's going to go round and it's obviously a sphere and so you go around. So you don't want to stop that scrolling there. So I had to add some stuff in there to basically bring it back so you couldn't be cheeky and try and go from side to side because they're mice, they haven't explored very much. They've explored up to about here. Over here is weasel territory, so we don't want to go past there. <laughs> uh, up here is wild country. It's full of moose and it's full of um, lots of really scary things like wolves, so we don't want to go past there. So we're just focusing on this little area here. So I'll just show you what happens, what that code looks like, and what happens if you get rid of it. So up here, I've started off my map. So this is all the code you need to kind of start it off. It's L.map map. So that's, that's pretty cool. This is just my stuff and my icons. I can make them bigger and smaller and just where the pictures are for them. You can make the pictures whatever you want. Uh, so here's my fit to world and set map bounds. So I'll just comment that out and we'll see what that looks like. And this is the one that lets you scroll on forever and you completely lose all your markers and nothing really kind of works. So normally you don't need that one, but they were very nice and they added that in, so that's really good for, for the custom stuff. Uh, the other thing you can do is you don't have to have a min and max zoom. I put this in and you'll soon see why. Because this is kind of how it looks to start with. <laughs> this is at zoom size zero. I had to learn a lot about maps and I had to learn about a lot about tiling and, and cutting up maps and all that sort of stuff. Uh, it handles a lot of stuff for you, so I didn't have to write anything to do with the zooming. It was all there for me. Um, I did have to get the map and cut it into pieces for each of the zoom levels. There's a few things that'll help you out with it. Uh, otherwise, feel free to steal the code that's on there. It's, it's a little Ruby script. It's like calculate this and everything's in fours. So you start off with one and you start with four, then 16, then 64 and all that. All right, so this is without it. And then I've got five zoom levels. And then this is the last kind of zoom level. And then after that, I don't have any images there. And so it disappears. So I obviously didn't want that to happen while I was playing. So that's why I've got the min and max zoom there, because those are the ones that are nice and make sense. So this is my code here. So this code I wrote three years ago when I didn't know any JavaScript. And I'm actually 
still pretty happy with it. Everything's written, I, I, everything's written pretty descriptively and I can kind of understand what it's doing, which is nice. So I was very surprised by that. I thought I was going to have to go in and rewrite everything so that it understood so when I showed people they wouldn't be there scratching their heads. Uh, but this is my map, map right click. So this is when we're right clicking to add a new one. So this is the leaflet one. Anything with a big L is leaflet. It picks up the, long, the latitude, it picks up the longitude, it hides all the forms. Because what, what this does is for every one you've got on the screen, it puts a form there, and I'll show that in a minute. And so you might have like 50 on the screen, and we don't want to show that, obviously. So basically at the start of every, every one of my functions, I hide all of it, and I hide the new form, and I figure out what form I want to show, and I show that one. So in this one, because it's a new one, I want to show the new area form. I want to hide all the rest. And I want to take the latitude and longitude and I want to put it into my hidden inputs. So I'll just unhide them. If I can find them. My beautiful CSS. So now whenever I right click on in anything, here's the longitude and latitude here, and it just automatically puts it in there for me. So I don't have to think about it. You can't go in there and edit it after the fact. Oh, well, I might be able to now. It's been a while. So, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> and it's just going to confuse anyone who's using it. It's like latitude, longitude, what's, yeah. So I hid that, and then JavaScript handles that all for me. And then after it's saved and when it's loading, it uses those values, it takes them out of the form to figure out where to put these markers up here. So that's pretty much the same, just reverse. So when you click on it, it gets out the, for each of the area forms that are there. It takes out the latitude, it takes out the longitude, it takes out the name of the place where it is. Uh, it then uses the leaflet marker thingy uh, chucks those values in, you can put which icons you want, so you can have them whatever colours and whatever pictures you like, and then it just binds, it adds it to the map. And that's, that's pretty much all it does, apart from this other function, which just hides all the forms again, and show, it just shows the one you want. So if I get rid of this, with all the hiding, we might be able to... That's Skype, I don't want Skype. Duh. We can see that all the, all the forms are there. So at the start of every load, it, it finds all the forms, it, makes, it puts all the information in there, and then the JavaScript, what it does is it hides the forms that you don't want to see, it just shows you the one you want. If you make a new one, it fills in these longitude and latitude for you, so you don't have to think about it, you don't have to worry about it. And then, so if it's already there, it's already saved, it then figures out where that is on there, it puts it in the right spot, and whatever name you've got in there, it puts it up there. Yep, um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for that. Uh, are there any questions? Or anything you want me to see or uncomment? Uh, yep. Um, so I have a question for you. Yeah. This is up on a public website as well? Yeah, yeah, this is a public website. What uh, Mouseguard.heath.cc and, and related to that, what stops your players from going there and reading the code? <laughs> uh, absolutely nothing. <laughs> 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 uh, if you look at my GitHub repository, which I hadn't looked at for a couple of years, it's got on my thing to do, add in administration <laughs> and login. <laughs> yeah. I, I used to use a, a online wiki to manage my campaign notes and whatnot. Yep. Oh. <laughs> for each page, there was a DM notes tab or a DM notes subpage, and I would just add false information that they relied upon that would just lead them astray. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. Yeah, at the moment on my main one, I've just got plain, I, I've just got set up one, so it'd just be for a new fresh game. I don't have any. It's just got notes that I got out of the book, but yeah, you could, you could, you could troll your players, and you could have like a player-only view where some things are disabled and un yeah, and all that. Yep. Have you considered, like, I mean, not that the world probably needs more campaign management tools, but this looks pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Have you considered generalizing it for um, doing sort of map notes for other game systems? Yeah, that's, 
that's where I thought it was, that's kind of what I had in mind for it. So the next step was going to be to create logins so people could log in, you could generate a new one, you could, and you could keep track of different campaigns that way. And because at the moment it's just one database, so it's pretty, it's pretty simple. Uh, actually, since preparing for this talk, my husband's gone away and, and he started to do exactly that. So he might be back in another year to, to talk about one that he's made if, yeah, and see how that goes. But yeah, I, I couldn't actually find anything like this on there. I think most people write notes or they keep blogs and stuff like that, but I hadn't found anything where you could put in a map. So I thought it was, it was quite a fun project. Ah, that's a good question. I will. I had no idea how to do it, and I still only have a vague idea how to do it, and so I asked my husband to do it for me. And here is the code that does that. <laughs> Basically, what it does is it takes the map, it makes a directory to put it in. Um, it's going from zoom level 0 to 5, and for each of them, it's Doing the doing some maths to it, and then it's making the it's cutting them into pieces and it's putting them into into the right directories. So feel free to steal this if you like. Otherwise, there are programs that that do it. Otherwise, if you're really keen, uh, you could do it in Paint or Photoshop or something like that. Because I'll show you what the files look like. Because it's just it's just literally the same picture just cut into four pieces, 16 pieces, all that sort of stuff. Um, so this is, yep, so in this one we've got zero, 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 and that's what the map looks like, it's just one. And then we've got one, zero, zero, which is kind of the top quarter, and then they've got one, zero, one, which is the next one across, and it just cuts it up and it puts it into this one, and this is the format that Leaflet want it to be in. And so if you put it in this format, then there's um, a line up here, which is just GitHub pages tiles. So when you're doing your tile layer up here, you just tell them where all your files are. And that's the, that's the format they want them in, the ZXY format. And then it handles all of it for you. You just have to put this add to map thing and it puts it all there for you, and it handles all the zooming, and it handles all the positioning, and, and yeah, it's really cool. It wasn't, wasn't, wasn't too painful, so. So those yep. aren't geo-referenced tiles? No, no, this is just from a PNG. Like it's yeah, so how do you get the lap long? Uh, from where you the program works it out for me. Right. Okay. Yep. Just physically wherever the... Yep. On map right click, you get the event, and then in the event, you get the latitude and you get the longitude, and then I put that into my inputs. Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't quite sure, but yeah, those seem to be the sort of numbers that were popping up. I think zero, and then yeah. Cool. Any other questions? Where are you going to take it from here? Ooh. What I was hoping to do, one of the really cool things that Leaflet does is it lets you draw lines. So uh, what I really wanted to do was to have it so if they start off at Lockhaven, then they go down to Ivydale to do a job down there, that I could draw a line on there to show where they had been. Uh, they had some cool, cool stuff about it, and I tried to write some, but it, yeah, I'm, I might go back now. I've got a bit more JavaScript experience <laughs> and, and have a look at that, because that would have been really cool to... I'll see if I can find an example. Yeah, I can't see it just here, but yeah, they have things so you can do lines and you can draw things. And I would have really liked to say on this day they did this and on this day they went there and you can actually kind of plot out where they, where they went. So that, that would be kind of the next step. Well, I think that's me done. Um, I've got a bunch of free t-shirts, so if you missed out on one of the other t-shirts or if you want a second t-shirt, please come up and grab them so I don't have to take them on the plane home with me. Because as you can see, I'm already taking quite a bit on the plane. <laughs> and it was a bit, a bit of a hassle to get them here. So definitely take them. They're really, really cute. They've got little robots on them and a little ruby. So yeah, cool. That's me. Thanks. <laughs>